latest team 27 and I'm doing another YouTube video. I'm just getting adjusted here. So, if you see the camera moving, don't worry. I'm just getting adjusted to read a book for the first time. I believe I said that I'd be reading a book, but the book's title is, um, I believe I should move the lantern, but it is Alexander, or Loyal Alexander, I at least think. That's how I'm going to say it for here at the moment. Now, we shall start on page number one. If I can make that. Now, let's see if I can find it. Um, okay, here's chapter one. Uh, trying to reposition the lantern as well, because it is dark right now. So it's close to night, basically. Now, I shall start reading. If the... Um, video edge falls over, then I'll, or the phone, I should say. If it falls over, then I'll try fixing it, so that way you can actually see the book. But now I'm going to get started, and this video will be about 20 minutes, so, uh, yeah, or long. Now I shall get started. Taran wanted to make a sword, but Cole charged with the practical side of his education, decided on horseshoes. And so it had been horseshoes all morning long. Terran's arms ached, suit blackened his face. At last he dropped the hammer and turned to Cole, who was watching him critically. Why? Terran cried. Why must it be horseshoes, as if we had any horseshoes? Cole was stout and round, and his great bald head glowed bright pink. Lucky for the horseshoes, horses, was all he said, glancing at Terran's. Tar handiwork, I could do better at making a sword. Terran protested, I know I could, and uh, oh, I can't really read that word, but I'm going to shut up for the rest of the video pretty much, so I'm just going to try and read it the best I can. So, Lee 4, Cole could answer, he snatched the tongues Flung a strip of red hot iron to the end and began hammering away as fast as he could. Wait, wait, cried Cole. That is not the way to go after it. Heedless of Cole, unable even to hear him above the din, Terran pounded harder than ever. Sparks sprayed the air, but the more he pounded, the more the metal twisted and buckled, until finally the iron sprang from the tongs and fell to the ground. Terran. Baron started in dismay with the tongs. He picked up the bent iron and examined it. Not quite the blade for a hero, Cole remarked. It's ruined. Terran grumly agreed. It looks like a sick snake, he added ruefully. As I tried telling you, said Cole, you had it all wrong. You must hold the tongs, so when you strike, the strength must flow from your shoulder, and your wrist must be loose. You can hear it when you do it right. There is a kind of music in it. Besides, he added, this is not the metal for weapons. Cole returned, the cro crooked 
half-formed blade to the furnace, where it lost its shape entirely. I wish I might have one, or have my own sword. Terran sighed, and you would teach me sword fighting. Wish it, wish, wished, cried Pull. Why should you want to know that? We have no battles at Caerdalben. We have no horses either, objected Terran. But we're making horseshoes. Get on with you, said Pole, unmoved, that this, or that is for practice. And so would this be, Taran argued. Come teach me the sword fighting, you must know the art coals shining head glowed even brighter. A trace of a smile appeared on his face, as though he were savoring something pleasant. True, he said quickly. I have held a sword once or twice in my day. Teach me now, pleaded Terran. He seized a poker and banished it, slashing at the air and dancing back and forth over the hard, packed earthen floor. See, he called. I know most of it already. Hold your hand, chuckled Cole. If you were to come against me like that, with all your positioning, posing, I mean, and bouncing, I should have you chopped into bits by this time. He hesitated a moment. Look you, he said, quickly. At least you should know there is a right way and a wrong way to go about it. He picked up another poker. Here now. He ordered with a sooty wink. Stand like a man. Terran brought up his poker. While Cole shouted instructions, they set to pairing and thrusting. With much banging, clanking, and commotion for a moment, Terran was sure he had the better of coal, but the old man spun away with amazing light, lightness of foot. Now it was Darren who stove desperately to ward off Cole's blow. Abruptly, Cole stopped. So did Terran. His poker poised in midair. In the doorway of the forge stood the tall, bent figure of Dalben. Dalben, master of Car Dalben, was 379 years old. His beard covered so much of his face, he seemed always to be peering over a gray cloud on the little farm while Tyran and Cole saw to plowing, sowing, weeding, reaping, reaping, and all the other tasks of husbandry, Dalben undertook. The meditating, or the meditating and occupation, so exhausting he could accomplish it only by lying down and closing his eyes. He meditated an hour and a half, following breakfast and again later in the day. The clatter from the forge 
and or forge had aroused him roused him from his morning meditation. His robe hung askew over his bony knees. Stop that nonsense directly, said Doll Ben. I am surprised at you, he added, frowning at Cole. There's a serious work to be done. It wasn't Cole, Terran interrupted. It was I who asked who learned swords play. I did not say I was surprised at you, remarked Doll Ben. But perhaps I am after all. I think you had best come with me. Terran followed the ancient man out of the forge across the chicken run and into the white thatched cottage. There in Dalben's chamber, moldering tomes overflowed the sagging shelves and spilled onto the floor. Amid heaps of iron cookpots, studded belts, harps, with or without strings, and other oddments, Taran took his place on the wooden bench as he always did when Dolan was in a mood for giving lessons or reprimands. I fully understand, said Dolben, settling himself behind his table. In my use of weapons, as in everything else, there is a certain skill, but wiser heads than yours will determine when you should learn it. I'm sorry, Turn began. I should not have. I am not angry, Dylan said, raising a hand, only a little sad. Time flies quickly. Things always happen sooner than one expects. And yet, he murmured, almost to himself. It troubles me. I fear the Horn King may have some part in this. The Horn King? asked Terran. We shall speak of him later, said Dalben. He drew a ponderous leather-bound volume toward him, the Book of Three, from which he occasionally read to Terran, and which the boy believed held in his pages everything anyone could possibly want to know. As I have explained to you before, Dalben went on, and you have very likely forgotten Pydain is a land of many cantrays, of small kingdoms and many kings, and of course, their war leaders, who command the warriors. But there's a high king above them all, said Terran, Math son of Mon We. His war leader is the mightiest hero in Pydrain or Pydain. You told me of him, Prince Guidon. Yes. Tyran went on eagerly. I know. There are other things you do not know, Dolben said. For the obvious reason that I have not told you for the moment, I am less concerned with the realms of the living, with the land of the dead, with Anuvin. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Okay. I hope you're all liking the story so far. Now, I shall continue to the next page. I probably will only be able to read two more pages. Just letting you guys know. And I bet my next time I'm reading this book, I'll probably be more professional. So, yeah. Tyran shuddered at the words even Dal Ben had spoken it in a whisper. And with King Arwan, Lord of Anuvin, Dalbin said. Know this, he continued quickly, Alvin is more than a land of death. It is a treasure house, not only of gold and jewels, but of all things of advantage to men. Long ago, the race of men owed, owned these treasures by craft and deceit. Oren stole them 